So I talked about D'Angelo Russell's free agency probably, I don't know, two months ago or so. And then since that time, D'Lo has been going nuclear, where he's making all of those contested floaters and mid-range jumpers that he loves to take, and his decision-making has been better, and he's been a huge reason why the Nets are the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference right now, and they're building momentum towards the playoffs. And, uh, you know, when I talked about D'Lo in that video, I said... Probably around $15 million, which is about an average point guard salary, because I thought he at least grown to that. And, uh, well, we all know how his last couple months have been. So now the question is, is D'Lo, is D'Angelo Russell going to get a max contract? Now, I don't know if the Nets want to actually give him what I believe it would be $27 million, because it's like one-fourth of the salary cap. But they may be forced to, because there are a few teams in the uh, in the association who are desperate for some perimeter scoring and are going to have some cap space, whether it's uh, the Orlando Magic or the Phoenix Suns. Granted, Phoenix would probably just like a decent point guard, whether it's D'Angelo Russell or not, I don't know. But even a team like the Indiana Pacers could perhaps be a little bit more attracted to the idea of D'Angelo Russell now, because... They do need another scorer next to Victor Oladipo, and, um, you know, Miles Turner's been coming on a bit lately, but perhaps they think D'Angelo Russell can be that guy. I mean, there were rumors about them and Mike Conley for at least a little bit, so that could be an idea, I guess. But, um, you know, Brooklyn may be forced to give this guy a max contract now, and then you have to start looking at the Nets salary situation first off we have to talk about the idea of is d'angelo russell worth a max contract i mean if he can maintain what he's been doing for the past two months or so well then yes i mean in january he averaged 24 points seven assists and his efficiency was excellent across the board on top of the fact that the nets have been winning games yeah i think there's that and because d'lo has brought a lot of excitement to the team as well uh, marketability, of course, matters. Granted, the Nets are in New York, so they've already got a little bit of a leg up there, I would assume. They're not the Knicks, of course, but the New York market helps them. But even so, they do need a guy like D'Angelo Russell to generate just all that excitement. People coming to the game, buying jerseys, also the perception around the league where a potential other free agent, whoever it may be, could say, well, I want to play with D'Angelo Russell and I really like what they have going on there. Whereas if D'Lo is not there, then that uh, could hurt your chances. I mean, if we look at the Nets salary situation, they have $54 million committed right now. And if D'Lo was re-signed to that $27 million, then we're looking at them being in the low 80s in terms of salary. And I don't think any of the other guys who are going to be off the books are really guys they need to re-sign between Rondé and Damari Carroll. I think you're kind of comfortable with letting those guys go. And you would still have money for somebody else. Now, if you wanted to get another max slot, you would have to work a little hard. You might have to try to get off of the Alan Crabb contract some way. Uh, because that salary is really the, the thing that's hurting them right now. But... I think it is possible to give D'Angelo Russell a max contract and be comfortable with the direction your team is going in, especially because, as I mentioned before, that Spencer Dinwiddie contract is so good. I mean, he's only going to make $10.6 million next season. And you've got Karis LeVert for $2.5 million next year, and then after that, we'll see what happens with his restricted free agency, but... I have to guess Karis LeVert is not in line for a max contract unless he explodes in the next season or so. And granted, he was looking pretty damn good this year before he got injured, but uh, yeah, I think there's room for this to make sense. Now, in a perfect world, I'm sure the Nets would like to not give D'Lo a max because, I mean, if we're thinking about who really deserves that off of their rookie contract, then it's the Ben Simmonses of the world, and, you know, for as good as D'Lo has been, he's not Ben Simmons. But between restricted free agency and somebody else maybe forcing the Nets' hand on top of just... It might be one of those things you just kind of do. I mean, I know we've moved away from guys like Evan Turner and Harrison Barnes and Otto Porter making a crap ton of money. 
but given how much D'Lo means for the Nets, that could mean that a max contract is coming. But again, a lot of it is dependent on some other team just being like, you know what, we may be able to get this guy if we offer him as much as possible. Because if a team like Orlando offers D'Lo 20 million, the Nets are going to match that. And I understand Orlando, who knows what's really going to happen with their offseason because they have some decisions to make. But maybe they would just love the idea of D'Angelo Russell and Markel Fultz together, you know? And maybe they would think to themselves, that is worth giving D'Lo the max to guarantee that we have these two young guards. Especially because they're a franchise that has been so desperate for a real star player since Dwight Howard was gone pretty much. So this is all very interesting stuff. Now if I can get back to the idea of is D'Lo going to fall back down to earth or is this the new D'Angelo Russell? Um, He's making a lot of jump shots. This season he's made 172 threes and about 55 of those are assisted, which means a little less than half of them are coming off the dribble. He's shooting 54% between 10 and 16 feet, 44% from long two-point range. There's certainly a chance that he can keep on making these shots because he's very crafty. The way that he puts the defender in jail and the way that he just kind of plays the game at his own pace and reads the defense and uh, slithers his way past defenders and all that to get to his floaters and, and those type of shots, he's very good at doing it, but... It's really tough to put up the amount of points he's putting up without getting to the free throw line a lot. And, I mean, in February, he's shooting the most amount of free throws of any month, and it's still only like four a game. I mean, the guy only shot two free throws a game in his January where he was playing nuts. I mean, in the 40-point game against the Magic, he didn't shoot a single free throw. The 31-point game against the Kings, he didn't shoot a free throw. So while I'm recognizing the talent, and while it is clear that D'Angelo Russell has improved, I don't know if it's a guarantee just yet that he is just going to be this 24-25 to point guy who can kind of be a one-man offense sometimes. And, um, you know, perhaps the Nets feel that way. Perhaps they don't feel that way at all. Uh, Because there's certainly a lot of reason to be excited about the dude. And if push came to shove and you forced me to either give him max money or let him go with how good these last couple months with him have been, I would probably still give him the max with some fear in the back of my head. But if I was forced to do it pretty much, then yeah, I'm going to do it. So... Yeah, I really didn't picture making another D'Angelo Russell video this year, but his uh, his hot streak has been going on long enough to where it's like I'm I'm forced to talk about this, and we are forced to uh, reassess how much money he is uh, gonna get this off season.